Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, early voting for the June 4th primary in Doniana County is currently underway and throughout the week here on the KFOX 14 Morning News, like we've been telling you, we're going to have the candidates here in studio with us who are running for that position. Yes, and joining us this morning for a community conversation is Fernando Macias. Fernando, thank you so much for being here with us. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're choosing to run for the district attorney position. And thank you, I'm, and good morning to you. I'm very excited to be here. I My background is as a district court judge. Okay. So during that 11 year period, I presided over 10,000 cases, 90% of them dealing with criminal related matters. I've served in the state Senate for 16 years, so I understand the dynamics of funding this kind of office, making sure that it has the number of prosecutors that are necessary to be able to prosecute cases. Because what I see more and more is that individuals present themselves to become the district attorney and they know their lawyers, they know how to prosecute a case, but that's not where the failing is. The failing in many of these offices is because you have to know how to prosecute three thousand cases during a 12 month period. So the administrative, the management challenges is where historically we're failing within these offices. And we'll talk a little bit more about the prosecution of cases in just a moment, but let's talk now about if you are elected into office, what would your priorities be? Well, the priorities are gonna be very common among all of the candidates. You have to focus on the most violent offenders in the community. You have to focus on those that are repeatedly endangering people in the community. All cases deserve a level of priority and a level of commitment something that you can achieve if you've organized the office properly. But of course there's going to be priorities. You have to, let me give you this example. There are 9,000 people who have gone through the detention center, the Doniana County Detention Center, over the last 12 months. There's 497 that have been in there three or more times. And when I say more times, there's some that have been in there 27, 24, uh, but above 20 times in a 12 month period. You have to focus on that smaller core, which is more manageable. And by focusing there, you can reduce crime in the community because the worst offenders are incarcerated. And now you're just talking about um, repeat offenders, but in general, what are other crimes that are plaguing Adonia and a county and how do you plan on prosecuting those specific crimes if you are elected into office? And let me suggest to you that although the term plaguing Las Cruces right now, these have existed always. There has always been crime in all of our communities here in El Paso and in Las Cruces. So the focus is to basically prioritize those individuals who place the community at the greatest risk, regardless of what the crime is. If you are a repeat offender, if you have that history, and the district attorney's office knows who those individuals are, law enforcement knows who they are, there has to be that kind of partnership and focus on that more manageable group of individuals, not individuals who are dealing with behavioral health issues, homelessness. We, we can address that as a community, but we have to focus in on those that will present the greatest danger to the safety of the community. And when it comes to the dismissal of cases, how would you prioritize which cases that you guys would seek to prosecute? And then what would you also like to tell the families or victims who feel their cases have been wrongfully dismissed? Well, I think there is many individuals in the community who feel that they have not received any form of justice, whose cases have been dismissed. So as a district attorney, especially the new district attorney, you would go in and assess which of those cases are still salvageable? Where are the witnesses? Is the evidence there to begin with? But you can do that through an organized approach. That's not, that is where the need is. That's where the failure is. It is not uh, impossible to uh, organize the office in such a way that you're not scrutinizing every case and that you're not meeting the timelines. That's a lack of organization. 
just very simple. So if you are able to focus your resources initially to determine the importance and the priority of the case, you're going to have far less dismissals. People tend to blame one another. My philosophy is you are given a challenge, and you're given that challenge by the Supreme Court of New Mexico. And that challenge is not impossible to meet. You manage to the challenge. You know what is expected of you. You know what you must deliver for the community. Fernando, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. We wish you the best of luck. If you are just turn, tuning in and missed this community conversation, we will have a replay of it on kfoxtv.com as well as replays of past community conversations. Yes, Fernando, thank you again so much for being here. My pleasure to be here with both of you. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this short break.